Tonight, I wanted to go to this region in the sky. It's in the Cassiopeia constellation. There is a wide star field out there. There are three main objects that I wanted to go after. I wanted to go after this lobster claw nebula. It looks like a lobster class. And also, I wanted to go after this nice looking bubble nebula. Right? And also, if you see, barely if you can make it out, you see the star field. This is the pepper cluster, salt and pepper cluster. I wanted to go after this one. So in my picture, I wanted to take this wide angle image that includes this claw, this includes the bubble, and this little salt and pepper nebula, all three in like one star field. It's not that easy. And also this region, some of it is brighter and some of it is very faint. So when you start taking pictures, you got to be careful in terms of the stars that are coming in. And number of stars that are going to come into your picture will be very, very high. So we have to reduce the number of stars to expose the nebula. So I wanted to share my workflow with you. Hey guys, this is one of the most difficult narrow band pictures that I process. So here is my stacked image, uh, H alpha I stacked 120 seconds which is like 2 minutes uh, close to an hour and a half worth of pictures. On the oxygen I think I stacked 180 seconds which is like 3 minutes close to uh, an hour and a half I think as well. Uh, they both came out okay. I used one of the H-alpha images as the reference image for the oxygen. So by the time the stacking is complete, it already gave me a perfect alignment. So if I align these two channels, I should be in a good shape and I don't need to do star alignment again. And if you wanted to zoom in and see how the quality of the picture is on the both H-alpha and oxygen, uh, they both came out okay. So this is the bubble nebula. On the left side, you can see barely lobster claw nebula, right? So this one came out pretty good as well. If you can see, if I go to the, so this is after I did the DBE, I did a dynamic background extract. So this one looks okay. Notice there are like large number of stars in this area. So that's one of the things that I need to handle it. So the next thing I did was uh, I made a clone of this and uh, uh, did a multi-scale linear uh, transformation. This is basically to reduce the noise. You can actually create a clone of the same image and mask on this image and do a multi-scale linear. I did a curves transformation on these. Uh, very light, just to bring up any details. Okay, and also I converted them from linear to non-linear images by doing the screen stretch as well as the histogram transformation. Uh, the idea is I wanted to stretch these at the same level. Uh, I used the basic natural color. Uh, actually, I used not this one. I used as my, uh, for the green channel, I used the oxygen. For the blue, I used my oxygen. And for H-alpha, is basically mapped to the red. The picture that came out, came out pretty decent. It's not too bad. Uh, but you have to work on that image quite a bit to uh, make this image looks this way. This is my like final image uh, to get to this point. So if you look at my workflow, you will see I did a dynamic crop just to make sure I remove that, you know, the dark patches that you saw on the oxygen channel. And then I did a background neutralization. This is to make sure any like green gradients are gone. And also I did a SCNR and then I did a color calibration. It kept not a plate solving using the photometric. So because the photometric failed, I have to go this manual route of color calibration. So in the color calibration, I created two previews. I created the first preview for the background, like somewhere here in this region. And the preview two, I created the entire image as a white reference image. And then basically I did color calibrate. It came out pretty good. I uh, did the SCNR a couple of times once that is done. And the histogram transformation I had to perform to stretch out a little bit more. You have to perform deconvolution and morphological transformation to reduce the stars in your star field. And 
and I think uh, here is my final image after that is done. I hope you guys like it. Thanks for watching.